Hi, in the previous lecture, we saw what is HD Insight, what is the HD Insight architecture, and what are the different type of HD Insight clusters that we can provision. In this lecture, let's go and set up our first HD Insight cluster. So let's go ahead and do it. But before you do that, you need to go to portal.azure.com and log in with your Azure account. All right, so you should be seeing this particular screen if you have logged in successfully to portal.azure.com. So here you will see different menu options. Uh, may not many of them are of our interest. We are going to go through create resource either from here or from all services. So you can create on all services and it will show you everything that the Microsoft Azure has to offer. Our option of HD Insight is all the way down under analytics over here. If you do not want to do all this scrolling and searching, you can simply type HD Insight over here and it should be able to show you this particular screen upon cl clicking HD Insight cluster. You can go to create HD Insight cluster and it will basically show you a screen from where you can configure your HD Insight cluster. Alternatively, you can also click on create resources and search for HD Insight and it will show you this particular screen with some textual information as well. You can click on create and it would show you the same screen. So there are two ways we can create HD Insight cluster, either quick create or the custom size settings, apps, etc. I'm not going to show you all the details at this particular stage. We are simply going to create a HD Insight cluster very, very quickly while we might use some of the features of custom, all right? So it's a three step process, certain basic configuration settings. You need to set your storage settings and some summary of configuration information to validate and verify it. Okay. So let me give some cluster name. So let's say it is JK HDFS 99. So JK is my initials HDFS and 99. It is simply checking it over here and it is available. So it will be appended or it will be added over here as a link. So whenever I want to access this cluster name will be jkhdfs99.azurehdinsight.net. Okay. Then next is to choose your subscription. I have got both pay as you go and free trial. The free trial is disabled because the free trial period has been over so i'm going to use pay as you go if you have your free trial subscription still active you can use that as well next is to configure the cluster type now as we have seen azure offers hadoop edgebase storm spark r server kafka and interactive query as the cluster type i'm going to simply choose hadoop for now you have got two operating systems here, Linux or Windows. However, Windows has been deprecated and no longer supported on HD Insight. All right, so we are simply going to choose Linux and I'm going to keep the default version of Hadoop on this, which is the latest version, which is HDI 3.6. Now, I'm not going to check this particular checkbox. If I do that, it is going to ask me for some sort of an active directory and it adds some additional cost to my cluster so for now i don't re really require that so i'm going to keep it as it is and you can simply read about these features which this particular cluster is going to provide which is the ssh access uh, certain hd insight applications custom virtual network hive metastore uzi metastore as well as the data lake store access I'm not going to bother too much about this at this stage and simply click on select. All right. Then next is the cluster login username. So if we want to connect 
to the cluster using Ambari or by other means, what should be the username from an admin perspective? So I'm going to keep the default admin as it is. Then it will ask you for the cluster login password. This password along with admin will be used for the login to HTTP using Ambari. Okay, so give some password. and it complies with the policy the ssh username as ssh user is nothing but the username which i will use while connecting to this cluster using an ssh client such as putty okay and i can choose to keep the same password for both ssh as well as the normal http login okay then next is the resource group so as you know everything happens in azure using a particular resource group either i can select an existing one and i have few over here or i can create a new one it doesn't matter i will create with the same name as jkhdfs99 and it is available it doesn't matter uh, the location i suggest you choose something that is nearer to you Virtually, you can choose anything. It doesn't actually matter. If you click on this, it will show you what is going to be the core usage. So there are 60 cores that are available to me for the HDFS or Hadoop installation in this particular region. Okay. So don't worry about that. And let's click on next right the next one is setting the storage settings so storage account setting it is asking what should be the primary storage type and if you click on this or hover your mouse on this info it says that the cluster will use this storage account as the primary location for default data access so you can specify azure storage or azure data lake i'm going to keep it as azure storage selection methods is you need to specify whether you are going to use any subscription or if you are using an enterprise account it may ask you for an access key based account if you click on access key it will ask you for a storage account name and the access key right i'm simply going to choose my subscriptions as the selection method then next is selecting a storage account and to configure the required settings for that I'm simply going to create a new one and I will call it the same jkhdfs99 it's never a problem even if you use the same name as the resource group name and default container it has already chosen some name for that it's also asking for additional storage accounts and the data lake storage access let's not worry too much about that at this stage at the same time it is asking for selecting a sql database for hive as well as for uzi this is particularly being used for meta store settings in case i want the meta data to be stored in a particular table these are optional and you can leave it to azure to store the information in the database of its choice or the tables of its choice click on next and it should take us to a summary setting as you can see it is validating a lot of information and this is what we see the basic information is th this is the cluster name the subscription that i'm using is pay as you go this is my cluster type this is my username for cluster as well as the user name for ssh and my resource group as well as the location next is i have used the storage account of jk hdfs 99 which is a new one that is what it means and then it also gives me some sort of a cost estimate it has also given me the default cluster size that it has chosen for this sd inside cluster so it has chosen two head and four worker nodes okay so one head is the active one the primary one and the second is basically for the backup purpose and it has given me some estimate of 205 inr which i believe could be roughly around 3.1 us dollar but i can change that setting if you do not want to pay three dollar 
and we should not because we are simply trying to do an experiment so it doesn't matter we are simply trying to provision a cluster and see how it works so let's go and click on edit of cluster size and let's say I do not want four worker nodes I only want one worker node click anywhere and as you can see the price has dropped from 205 to 88 rupees which is approximately 1.3 dollars all right you can simply change the worker node size also from this link over here and it gives you certain recommended options with their configuration like how many cores it has and what has been the ram as well as the disks and stuff like that what I'm going to do is click on this view all and it gives me the general purpose computers as well. So as you can see the general purpose one and some of the optimized one have different pricing depending upon the kind of configuration they have. So I'm going to choose this D3 optimized one which seems to have the lowest price for the worker node and I'm also going to do the same for the head node so click on view all and then let's choose the same one and select and as you can see the price would then drop to less than a dollar or close to 58.55 INR remember this pricing is for per hour okay so and it is built on a per minute basis so if you are not using your cluster you better delete the cluster and all the resources associated with it that is true only for this course all right you do not want to leave it unattended or active while you are doing something else because Microsoft Azure is going to charge you for even though you have not used that particular cluster so please bear that in mind fine I'm going to click next and I am not going to bother about these things. It has come back to cluster summary and it is validating all the information. And once it has validated, the create button is now available for us. All you need to do is simply click on create. You will see this initializing deployment, submitting deployment, all of these notifications and now deployment in progress so it has done that in the three steps but now that is going to take approximately 15 to 20 minutes okay so i'm going to pause the video and come back once the cluster has been provisioned if you have followed me you are also more or less at the same stage so take a break for that 15 or 20 minutes you can go have a cup of coffee or just go for a walk it's good for your health I'm going to do the same while I pause the video all right our deployment of our HD insight cluster is complete and our cluster is now up and running it is by the name JK HDFS 99 in case you have given a different name you will have a cluster with that name up and running it also tells me in which location I'm running it as well as my subscription and the URL. So this is kind of a nice summary and dashboard that it provides for our cluster. It also tells us that there are three nodes running in this cluster. There are two head nodes with eight cores and one worker node with four cores. There are various options or quick links that we see here. I'm going to walk you through this panel or dashboard but that I reserve for the next lecture before we end this lecture I want to show you that in case you are going to do something else please delete this cluster okay and how do we do that so it is not just about this particular cluster so if I delete it from here it will delete the cluster and some of the resources but some like external storage and all may or may not get deleted so what I'm going to do is simply go to all resources 
and there I can see this HDFS 99 my cluster that's running as well as JK HDFS 99 as my storage account which is also up and running so I want to delete these so I simply select both of them and delete it so it says just type yes for confirmation I do that and I'm deleting it it says executing delete command on two selected items so one has succeeded and HD inside cluster typically takes a bit longer to provision as well as to delete but I hope by now you have understood how to provision your HD inside cluster of type Hadoop as well as how to delete it okay that completes this exercise of allocating and deleting your HD inside cluster we will go through various elements of this cluster and what are those dashboard and various links on that particular panel in the next lecture thank you so much for joining me here enjoy your time